Looking good. This is called unspoken word. As a child, I spoke when spoken to. Learn my place as children often do and stayed there a still and silent thing. The picture of a sign perfection, a portrait of good little girl obedience painted by the refined strokes of the Bible belt across my back. By adolescence, my mouth was a tight fist where words were folded like my fingers to my palms. An arsenal of unloaded weapons, I sucked the intentional hand seeking to shut up my mouth or extract words like teeth. I chewed my nails ragged, swallowed the dead remains, and fed on silence to stave the threat of violence in its dark premonitions. Fear found fodder and took root in the damp and toxic dump of broken meanings, cast off words and useless verbs, a heap of what wasn't said. My funeral bed of hot and smothered shame and every time I failed to claim the air muscle to speak my name, I died. Another suicide. Death was a bad habit. Your silence will not protect you, the poet said. Instead, two possibilities exist. The risk of speaking one's mind, or the small and petty deaths that over time wreak tragedy. In other words, there is no middle road. There's no halfway to say no. No, I will not shut up. No, you will not beat up the verbs that emerge from my throat. No, I refuse to choke on unspoken words. As I cut my wisdom teeth, I gnawed the bone of my own fear and grief and dared to speak as if words would save me. Which is why I'm speaking to you now as if somehow you will hear me mouthing what you cannot speak to say. Your silence betrayed me. You believed your indecision was benign. You walked ahead, left me behind, remained silent as a blinded and violent onslaught of human flesh aimed and launched at me, the easy mark. As if you were deaf to the word slurred to name and shame me. I do not blame you for what you could not do then, but your unforgivable sin is that you refuse to speak of it now and somehow you do not see me even as you examine my face smooth rude over the bruises darkening my flesh paint the jagged scar marking my lips i am no victim but to say i survived suggest i didn't die with the dark prince of two hands around my neck Perhaps it's my demise and rise from what was burned by the flames of another's fury that makes for my impatient wait for your audible naming and claiming of who you are. Where you been of what you haven't said? We are poets. Words grow on our tongues, become food, giving life for our living. Or they are the rocks that weigh our pockets for our drowning beneath the river's rage. There is no written page to read, no chapter or verse to memorize or rehearse the words lining our lungs. This is improvisational speaking, the unsensational stands in rhyme, the unextraordinary poetry of our ordinary lives. The poet wrote, Everything we write will be used against us or against those we love. These are the terms. Take them or leave them. Poetry never stood a chance of standing outside history. What she meant to convey is no mystery. Our poetry in prose is so pretty. But we never stood a chance of escaping a stance. The freedom of speech is not free of responsibility. The price tag of our ability to speak measures the cost, the loss of our careless and casual spending of the pennies that bought our thoughts, our silence costs as much. Bears the burden wrought by what was lost by who we sacrificed for our fears. I see that you are broken. I hear your stunted, stuttered, and unspoken words, but you are not so fragile. You will not break beneath the words you can erase or revise. Our silence and lies are as dead and as deadly as the knives we pull from our backs. My intention is not to judge or to preach, but to somehow reach across this chasm of words unsaid to say, when you speak it, I will hear you. Yeah. This is mother. How you pretend not to know how aged hands ruined the girl parts of me. How they tightened around my slender neck, choked my throat, choked breath from my throat until I coughed a chronic cough 
repeating how I am nothing. Mute, I pretend to speak when spoken to, say something nice or not at all. I have nothing to say, only the story that shapes the loss of me. How your father plundered my skirt, plucked innocence from between my thighs, tucked it with fumbling hands into his deep denim pockets and got away with it. How my mother did nothing. You pretend not to know something is missing from me. You wipe the glass face that protects his photo, <laughs> polish the frame, trace your fingers along the outlines of who you wanted him to be. You do not see my face or the marks of him upon my skin, and you cradle the thin blood-stained skein of lies you tell yourself. He was a good man. He was a good father. He never hurt me. Perhaps you blame me for his sins, his sick whims, and his thieving hands. Perhaps deep down you hate me almost as much as you hate yourself. The silence between us presses mother, and it wails. A hollow thud, a fractured echo, cracked open from my childhood and vibrating against the rock face of this chasm between us. So people ask me a lot um, about my gender identity. Um, and uh, that's a good question. Um, and actually, um, in terms of uh, gender, I feel like that's been a, a constantly evolving um, formation and process in my life. Um, and these days, and I've gone through a lot of different labels, actually, um, trying different things on. And these days, I identify as mixed gender. And um, if that resonates with you, then you should pick that up because um, I'm trying to like start a thing. Like, <laughs> like a whole movement of mixed gender people. So, um, so yeah. Um, and uh, the reason why I like mixed gender, first I'm mixed race, and so it makes a lot of sense to me, but you know, being um, both man and woman, or uh, male and female, and um, being neither, that, that looks like a contradiction because of the way in which um, our language around gender is so limited, um, but for me, that's a coherent experience, and that's a coherent way of living my life. Um, and um, it's still difficult to um, talk about it and to write about it, but this next piece um, was an attempt to do that. It's called, To Bind My Chest or To Wear a Bra. <laughs> <laughs> Should I press my breast with bandages? or wear plain cloth and elastic? Should I cover up with duct tape or should I embrace a cup-shaped contraption? Either way, I'm bound, my breast tender, my breath rendered short and gasping. I was never a girl. I was never a boy either. Always I was neither one and both. Suppose you're a half guy in a half woman's body. Imagine you're a half girl in an all man's world. Pissing in public is uncomfortable for everyone involved, but you're the one sitting on the toilet holding your dick. It's sick how they insist on asking what's in your pants and between your thighs and why are you holding on to it? I use safety pins in my underwear. Tuck silicone into the folds of my wife front, secure the package there, walk with confidence. I like a bulge of me the way I stick out in a crowd, but most time I carry it in my gut and my hands, not my pants. Doesn't matter. Press it down, show it off, scoff at convention, try to fit in, same shit, different day. Which is to say, folks like me, we weren't meant to pass or to wear frills. We weren't meant to bind or to take pills. We were simply meant to be neither one nor the other and breathing, breathing freedom. Thanks. Mm -hmm.